A lot of people said to me that two weeks in Bangkok would be way too much. And in some ways they were right, but in other ways it wasn't even close to enough. The city is so big and in such a state of constant flux that I don't think you could ever really spend enough time there. For my final day in the city, I really just wanted to stop, relax, go to a new area that I hadn't been to before, hit up some places I had been meaning to visit, and spend time reflecting on how I felt in the city and what I feel like I had learned there. Despite its very expensive prices, I had been meaning to stop at Sani's in Bangkok due to how well reviewed it was and also how lovely the space is. After a short ride on the Chow Paraya tourist boat, one of my favourite things to do in the whole city, I went to this beautifully curated environment that made me feel like I was back in Australia. For anyone who's new here, I'm from New Zealand, so being somewhere that felt a bit more familiar was very charming and made me feel a little bit more at home. Additionally, the food was absolutely incredible. I had an orange mocha and a brownie, and oh my goodness, this was remarkable. Orange mocha and a brownie. I did not think this would work, but it does. It clearly does. I'm very curious to try the most expensive brownie I think I've ever bought in my eyes. Okay. Even though I have had a lot of street food and Thai food, the brownie was flat out the best thing I ate in Bangkok, I'm not going to lie. I have a sweet tooth and this really, really, really satisfied it. I spent quite a lot of time just sitting here journaling upstairs as it was really quiet and there was no one else around for the few hours what I was I there. Like about the is that it's exactly how I like my brownies done, which is not how everyone likes their brownies done. It's like put in the oven for five minutes, so like just the outside cooks and the rest of it is basically like uncooked goop. Like it's fantastic, it's so moist, soft. Mm. I love the brownie, it's so good. I think Bangkok is such an interesting city because you really can find everything you need and you can do almost anything you want. Whether it's difficult or not, whether it's cheap or expensive is all over the place. But finding spots like this that can make you feel like you're somewhere else are always a welcome experience when you've been traveling long term. After Sani's, I was still really craving a matcha which I had not had for some time. So I headed through to Riri's Tea House, previously known as Matcha Mood. This place was also lovely not in the same way as Sani's, which I have to be honest and say I do have a real sweet spot for now. However, I did love this place's large windows. Basically, it was windows for walls, as I mean, you could observe outside a lot. So I really enjoyed just people watching while I was there.
As I had walked between the two places, I had noticed a street food place, so I decided to check it out and ended up getting some takoyaki. Additionally, I also got a boba because I don't believe you can have too many drinks in one day, uh, not non-alcoholic of course. From here, I walked back over the river to catch the tourist boat back from the other side. It's easy to forget how big Bangkok is when you're in a specific place, but walking over the river and seeing massive skyscrapers and the heavy traffic reminded me of how wildly chaotic the city is. Even though it's easy to forget when you're in those quiet places, you always still have the atmosphere and energy of the hustle and bustle that never really goes away. So even though I loved it, I don't know if I would be able to spend much more time there. I think short trips are probably the way to go. So even though I loved my time and experiences I had in Bangkok, I was very much ready to head down towards Phuket and Fifi. If you've enjoyed following me along through this day and you'll subscribe to see the rest of my travels around the world. Toodles!